In part 5 of this tutorial on basic processing techniques of PicoSpin JCAMP data using the MNOVA NMR processing software, we're going to cover the subject of appetization. So, appetization is our last basic processing task. We open the appetization dialog box by clicking the appetization icon or with the keystroke W. Appetization is a process of enhancing the sensitivity or resolution of the data by applying mathematical weighting functions prior to Fourier transforming the FID. Since signal to noise is proportional to the initial intensity of the FID, multiplying the FID by an exponential function should result in improved SNR. Exponential multiplication imposes an artificial rapid decay of the FID. Since line width is inversely proportional to the transverse decay, T2, a shorter FID means broader lines. In fact, exponential multiplication of this sort is termed line broadening because of the additional line width imposed by the function. Optimal signal-to-noise improvement occurs when the line broadening factor equals the resonance's natural line width. Each resonance has its own line width, and so a single line broadening value will not be optimal for every peak. Appetization can also be used to improve resolution by emphasizing the tail of the FID. Functions which emphasize the middle and end of the FID, such as sign bell functions, can reveal additional coupling. A function with a negative line broadening factor coupled with a Gaussian function can also be used. However, weighting functions which improve resolution often are at the expense of sensitivity. You should use such weighting schemes with caution. Furthermore, appetization cannot make up for poor shimming or inadequate acquisition time. If it's not resolved in the time domain, it will not be resolved using either zero filling or appetization. There are a number of available functions we can apply to our FID to improve the quality of our spectrum. Commonly employed weighting functions are exponential, Gaussian, and sine bell. Exponential and Gaussian functions enhance sensitivity, while the sine bell function enhances resolution. I'm going to first select the exponential function. By default, it's set to a value of 1 Hz. Because we're in the interactive mode, we can see immediately the effect changing this value has on our spectrum. I'll settle on a value of 0.6 Hz, and then I'm going to select sine bell. Selecting sine bell requires that I rescale the spectrum. So I'll X out of the appetization box, press the fit to height icon, or use keystroke H, and then reopen the appetization dialog box again. How much sine bell you apply depends on whether you use the linear prediction and zero filling, and what qualitative spectral enhancement you're trying to achieve with this weighting function. I typically apply 5 to 10 degrees. I'll hit OK, rescale the spectrum by pressing the fit to height icon, navigate to the phase correction icon, and touch up the phasing of my signals. X out of the dialog box, and then I'm done. And that's how we process PicoSpin JCAMP data using MNOVA. The order in which we apply most of these processing tasks is not critical. In practice, however, it's better to zero fill and baseline correct your data before phase correction. In this video, we explored basic processing techniques of PicoSpin JCAMP data using the MNOVA NMR software. We described various processing tasks, such as zero filling and appization, and provided guidance on how to set their values. For a more detailed description of data processing, please refer to MNOVA's user manual.